Well, hello everybody. Um, I'm going to try something new today. Uh, well, not today, but I'm going to show you something new that I tried that I found in one of the craft things. Anyways, it's called diamond painting. There's a lot of videos out there on how to do it, on the tips, on the tricks, and things like that. And so I went looking through AliExpress at all their, because they have a whole bunch, trust me. And I uh, found a design that I really, really liked. I just, I think that is so pretty. Can you see that? It's like a, a young lady with an umbrella in a autumn forest. So I figured I would try it out. Before I started, though, I went ahead and uh, ordered some extra things. When I got the kit, okay, it came, this is pretty big, it came rolled up. Okay, like this. And with it, and you can see I've already started, and with it came a little square of, it's kind of like red wax, but it's made of that same stuff, almost the same stuff as comes in your, your little pick-me-up pen, you know, where you pull it off and you can pick up any bitty gems with it came with one of those came whoops came with a tray Put that tray right there with a pair of scissors or tweezers not scissors and I guess they call that a pen I'm not even sure what it's called let's see what they call it a canvas the resins, tweezers, came with a little bitty wax thing, and this, they call this a plastic. So, but what I did was I went online and ordered a couple extra things that I thought would help me out. All right. One, you move these. When this one came in with the little spout, some might like it. I don't, and I'll show you why. You know, another in, in a little bit. I ordered these. Honestly, I swear I do not remember where. I think I went, I think I got them on Amazon. I'll look on my account and see if I can't uh, find the link. But these have all different sizes. You know, they've got the skinny, then they've got the medium. I think there's like 42 in here. They've got the, the large and then the extra large. I ordered two of them. I believe they were... Oh gosh, I don't even want to say because it wasn't that bad or I wouldn't have ordered them, trust me, because I'm a broke biatch. But I got two of them because when you get this and all these little things come in, you get this big bag of all these little bitty, uh, they're not even Ziplocs, they're just little bitty plastic pouches of the different colored resins. So this is what I did with my with my second one is I went through and I put all of the resins with their numbers that are listed on the side, uh, which also corresponds to the DMC code for embroidery floss things like that. Uh, 
and I organized them. It was so much easier for me to do it this way than, uh, than try to put them all in them little bitty Ziplocs. So, that was that. Um, I'm trying to remember everything. Oh, the second thing I bought. I went online and looked for like an all-inclusive kit. And it came like this. It's called Diamond Painting Tools with um, its kits, DIY. And what came in it was... And this was like $13, okay? No lie. $13. It came with it. I haven't used this yet. But this is a light board, you know, that you can put underneath. See, you can also use it underneath your artwork, tracing patterns, things like that. This came with it comes with the USB cord that connects to your laptop. It also came with a couple of these extra tweezers, some stickers that you can use, which didn't make a whole lot of sense to me unless you put the top, the first two, and then the bottom two numbers in here, but maybe you can figure it out. I'm just not that bright. Uh, it came with a bunch of squares of that wax stuff, and I'll explain some more of that. It came with three of these green trays, which I like a lot better than that white one. It came with some more tweezers. Another pair of the black ones. And this was, like I said, this was like 13 or 15 bucks. came with a couple spoons different size plastics, um, I call them pens, the wide edge, anyway, but yeah, that's what all of that came with, and it has helped, I've only needed the tweezers a couple of times, but you do need a good pair of tweezers, you don't have to go out and buy a specific or special kind. The plastic ones they send are, I mean, they're, I don't think they're very good. Okay. I will leave that over there for now. If we need this, I'll show you more later, but this light board, you know, it's kind of like a light box, but it's really thin. Look at that. There's the on-off. It's a fade. You get three different shades or three different brightnesses. Um, on-off and I think low, medium, and high. You plug it in to your, uh, like I said, your laptop. Sorry, I just want to put this away. Those were some of the things that I got with with the uh, to do this. Okay, I'm sorry. I haven't done a video in a while. Well, I have, but you know what I mean. I feel out of it today. I may just delete this one and start all over. Alright, now first things first is you want to check everything that's supposed to be in your package. Now we got, there we go. Check everything that's supposed to be in your package. Next to your numbers, right? Don't look at that second row because that's, looks like it's in a foreign language. So we'll do this.
Okay. Next to your numbers, I don't pay attention to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It just shows me I have 38 different colored resins. You'll see your DMC number, and then you'll see a little symbol. Diamond painting is a cross between mosaic, paint by number, rug hook, uh, that type of thing. Cross stitch, that was the other one I was thinking of. So you correspond the number with the symbol of what you need. All right. So say on here, it's going to show me for four ninety eight. It's going to show me I'm going to pull back the adhesive stick because this is really, really sticky. All right, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Let's see if you can catch that. Okay, you see all the different little symbols on there? You find the symbol that matches, or you find the number that matches the symbol, and you use that color to put it on here. <sighs> Another thing I found is if you, a lot of people will work left to right, if you're right-handed, um, it's a lot easier to work from right to left, so that way when you're laying, you know, you're working on it. Okay, stop with the focus. There we go. Okay. Um, so you're not resting your hand on open sticky. You know, you can put it down. I, th I thought it was going to be uncomfortable when I first started, but actually it's working out really well. All right, now to get your your canvas to lay flat, because like right here, this is still rolled up, and right here you can see is still flat. Let me pull this out a little so you can see. There we go. All right. You can see this is flat. It's not rolled up or curled. But since this spot is underneath my desk, under the edge of my desk, I'm not worried about flattening it out yet. All right. But another thing is if you have a big enough space, okay, you see how that side is all curled up, doesn't want to lay flat. All you have to do is pull the sticky back with this, okay, and then lay it flat again. See how easy that was? Now this side, I need to pull the sticky back. and then just lay it flat again. Bam. See? But I'm working on this side for now, so that's going to get curled up again, sitting on my lap. Now, a lot of people have different ways to do this, different processes that help them. Um, me, eh, I do it however I want to. When you pull the sticky back, all right, the adhesive actually doesn't just stay right there. I don't know if you can see this. Let me turn it back in. Okay, it's a little bit better, but do you see the shine where the sticky keeps going? And it stops right about here. I'm not doing that side yet. I'm working on this. But I'm showing you why. Okay. So what I would do so this extra sticky doesn't get covered in dirt and grease and, and hair and fuzzies and things like that. Some people use washi tape. I'm afraid because the sticky is so strong that it'll mess up and the washi tape won't come off. That's how strong it is. Because it's not the washi tape sticky that's gonna, you know, mess things up. So what I do is pieces of the adhesive cover that I've pulled off, I keep some of it so I can line it up along the edge. I don't know if you can 
and see what I'm doing. So, but it also gives me a straight line to line my resins up, and it won't look so, you know, cockeyed and lumper jawed. Okay. But I'm not in that section. Now, on this side, the adhesive was just an itty bitty strip. So I use, I did, on this side, I did use just a, uh, a really skinny roll of washi tape to cover this up. So let's see. Okay, now I'm going to work on the middle one, around this section, since I'm only doing a section at a time. Now there's a bunch of ways you can go about doing this. Me, eh, I just kind of wing it. Don't open a section up bigger than you're going to work on that day. I will say that because it's a lot harder to, um, you know, keep clean if you stop in the middle. Another thing I have off to the side is a hard brayer. This is just mine. It was the first one I bought when I wanted to start using, uh, when I wanted to start stamping and making greeting cards. But I don't like the hard brayer. I like the medium brayer. It's the hard just that. But since I don't use it for anything else, it's a really good thing to press, you know, these down into the sticky. All right. Let's set this up to the side. And let's look at our symbols. And I usually pull out maybe three or four colors to start with. So I do have the 498. I've already got that out. That's this That's this symbol. Yeah. So we've got that one. Let's do... Oh, let me finish this part. So what's K? Let's look for K, which is 3776. And since I have everything, you know, kind of... In numerical order, I mean, you don't, you're you not going to get one, two, three. Eventually, if you do all of the diamond paintings and you get all of the resins, you're going to have 3,857. You know, I don't know. Okay, so we got 3,776. That was K. We need E, which is 3,772. Ah, I put it in the wrong spot. Um, we also need a clover, which is like a club. Let's see. Which is all the way at the bottom, so it's 3857. And then we need 154. So let's start with those colors for now. Ooh, we got some thunder booming going on. There's my tray. What one? I'm, okay, let's start with 498. Now, these little green trays, before I show you, have ridges in them, all right? Now I'll show you why I don't like the white ones. The green ones have the little pointed edge like a pour spout, but it's not open. The white one that came with this is open. So I had resins falling out of that all the time. It was just aggravating. All right, now these little ridges help um, when you slide it, it helps turn the resin the right side up for you to be able to pick up with your pen, okay? So let's see. Pour a few in there. And there are trays that are big, trays that are small, you know, it's whatever your preference is. And then all you do is you just kind of slide it back and forth a little. Just slide it back and forth just a little bit, and they're all, almost, 
not all, almost. There we go. See if you can see those. See that? How they're all just already face up, except like maybe that one right there, but you know. Makes it a lot easier to grab. You take your pen, you grab your little wax thing. That was the other thing I wanted to show you. I've seen some some diamond painters. Ooh, okay, come on, let go. Freckles and everything. Ah, uh, it's not going to focus. Okay, let me pause this for a second and see if it'll help. Well, let's hope it'll fix in a minute. Anyways, this is blue tack. This is, okay, it says original reusable adhesive. This is exactly the stuff that's in your um, your pick-me-up pen. You know, your gem picker, sticker, whatever you want to call it. Some people have said that they prefer this than they do the wax. I've tried them both ways. I might go back and forth right now. I'm, I'm just, I've been using the wax. In the end of your pen, I don't know if you can see this. There we go, is an opening. It's like hollow. That metal tip right there is hollow. And what that's for is, okay, you pull back the, let me flip that over, pull back the adhesive covering or wax covering. You fill up your nib with um, this little bitty wax. Whoops, stuck my finger in it. All right. See that. All right, now there's not a whole bunch extra. Trust me, if you get a whole bunch extra on the outside, it's a pain in the butt. All right, but it's in there. And what that does is it allows you to pick up the. Oh, crap. Okay, figured it out. Okay, what it does allow you to do is pick up the... the resin on the end of your thing. Now it doesn't want to. Now the, some resins are circular, some are square. Mine are square. So what you do is you just butt it up against what's there and then you just start filling in. Now when you're doing a straight line, some people do a checkerboard pattern, you know, to keep their lines straight. Now I did that when I first started, you know, like on the edges or if I'm in a completely new area that doesn't have anything to butt up against, I'll do that. You see, all you're doing is you're picking up a resin and you're putting it down on its corresponding symbol. Oops. That's all you're doing. Now, some people choose to go line by line, you know, and just start up at the beginning or up at the top, up at, or over to the side, whichever works for you. And just, just whatever that symbol is, they just go back and forth and pick and pick and pick. Me, I just, I go by smaller areas. And if I have to go back because I missed one, then it doesn't bother me. Some people take 
one color and just try to go over the whole thing and fill all that in, to me, doesn't make any sense because then you're going to have a whole bunch of open adhesive that's not protected from dust and fuzz and, and stuff like that. So that's another reason why many people just, you know, do small sections at a time, which is what I'm doing. Now, I'm not going too much further over, even though I have, you know, other places. Because I don't want so much open adhesive that I'll be working over. See, like right here, my hand is resting on this while I'm doing this. And, you know, I don't have to worry about... Now, if you're left-handed, probably going from the other way might work for you. But, yeah, so. And if you find yourself, you know, where you need more right-side-up pieces, then you just wiggle your tray a little bit. Don't tip it. <laughs> Good night. Now see, one almost got stuck. Yeah, I tipped mine. Not on purpose. strays that tipped out. Okay, so I'm going to do a few more of these and then I will show you how easy it is just to switch colors. Some people prefer the square resins over the circle resins. This is the only one I've worked with, so I can't give uh, a fair, you know, opinion about whether one is better or not. I kind of like the idea of the square ones because it just seems like it would be easier to fit into this, you know, the little square symbol boxes that are on here. But then again, you know, well, another reason I like the square is because you can line them up tighter. With circles, I haven't worked with them yet, so but so this is just all I'm thinking, all my brain is thinking, is that with circles, you're going to have a whole bunch of white space around them. Um, Okay, squares, we can line up, right? Right there. Now, they may have a way to figure this out. I don't know, and that might just be how it works. But to me, I would just think there would be little bitty white spots all over the place. With circles. I'm sorry. Put this over here. Okay, so I'm going to pause this for a minute, do up what I can with the red, and then I'll come back to switch colors. Okay, I'm done with this color. Now I have noticed that sometimes this gets a little bit sticky. So my little embossing buddy, I just pop it in there a little bit <clears throat> tap off the excess and that works really well. So the next color we're going to do is, let's see, K. What was K? It was 3776, which is right here. 
right. My nails, they work, but they're, I'm afraid I'll break them. So I'm just going to put a couple in here. That's why I use something else to open my container. Do my tapping. And there's one stubborn one. Okay, and we will put it in there. Now, sometimes you'll get resins that are close in number that look identical, but they're really not. They are a shade off or two shades off. You know, it's just kind of like if you're buying yarn for crochet, you run out and you have to go back and get some more. But if you don't get the same lot number, you're going to have a different shade. Even though if the number, you know, even if the color you, you pick up is the same color on the package, if the lot number is not the same, you will have a different shade. Same with embroidery floss. That's why the DCM number, I don't remember what DCM stands for. I really don't. But most people just know that a D, well, I won't say most people. A lot of craft people know that DCM numbers mean, you know, like lot numbers for floss, embroidery thread, yarn, things like that. See, now I'm not taking this and going all the way over to where I'm open. Let me see. I've got a sun problem at the moment. So let's see how that works. All right. I'm just going in the area, you know, the general area of where I'm working at right now. Now, honestly, you will for miss some. There is no doubt about it. You will think I've got all of number 154. And you move on and you do five more colors and you find, oh, I missed one, and you have to go back and get number 154, bring it out, put that one little dot in, and then put it back. <clears throat> it will happen. doesn't matter how, you know, um, particular you are, how careful you are. You will miss one. I've seen a lot of people. I've watched a lot of videos on this because... You know, it, it was a brand new craft and I was kind of intimidated because it looks so beautiful when it's done. And, uh, there you go. And then when you open it up and you see all these little bitty squares, you're like, oh my gosh, that's going to take me forever. It really doesn't. It's intimidating when you start. Like the first time I started a junk journal, the very first one I did, boy, I went big. Figured go big or go home, right? Um, I was terrified. I knew I was going to screw it up. I knew, you know, that everything was just going to look like crap. And honestly, with the stuff I've put out since, I like my very first one first because I did it in honor of my grandmother. And I did her Bible verses that she loved. She loved her garden, so I focused a lot on her garden. She was a very genteel southern woman, and I focused on that. Her favorite colors, things like that. And when it came out, I was really impressed. You know, for it being a first time, now there's a couple things I wish now that I would have done different, but, you know, hey. But I was. The first time, I was absolutely terrified to take that first step. And now, it's like you can, 
unless you're doing a specific theme that takes a little bit more effort, junk journals are so easy to do. Get a couple under your belt and you're thinking, gosh, why did it take me so long to do this? Now when you press them down into the adhesive, I will say, some people will tell you to press firm and press hard and all of that. You don't really have to because when you do, you end up pushing all that wax that you put in your nib right here all the way down and then you have to keep replacing your, your wax, which isn't a big thing. You get quite a bit of it and it goes an awful long way. But, uh, I don't press mine down so hard. I press it enough to get it in, to get it in the, on the adhesive. But when I'm done, even if I wanted to stop right now, I could put this over, you know, because that's my adhesive, right? Roll my brayer on it to press resins down in it and that works just as fine and it doesn't waste that all right so we're done now we're done for for all intents purposes for now for that one so let's pick another one we got uh, let's do the let's do the clover. Which one was the clover? Three eight five seven. Ooh, that might be too much in that little bitty tray, but that's okay. See, they're all wumper jawed when you put them in there, and then when you shake them over those ridges, it tends to put them right side up. Let me go back. I'm going to put a little bit more um, goop on my nib. <laughs> okay. I'm oh, sorry. It just sounded funny. Goop on my nib. Oh, what color were we doing? Oh, we were doing the clover. Okay. I'm going to goop my nib. <laughs> Oh, it's like, go shoe your ties. Oh, tie your shoes. Okay. But see, once you get a rhythm going, it's really not hard. I said, this is the first one I've done. And I had it in my shopping cart in AliExpress for almost a year before I just broke down and said, okay, fine, I will get it just to test. And it wasn't that, ex it wasn't that bad. It was like 13, $14 for a 30 by 40 centimeter, um, canvas. Now I hate the metric system. I really do. I like the Imperial. So, but let's see metric or Imperial. We've got almost 18 inches as far as the width of the entire canvas goes. If you wanted to measure just the thing, you're probably looking at 16 by 20. Okay. In inches. <clears throat> Something around there. Oops. I get so distracted so easily. I really do. Now, all these different colors provide shading and dimension for the main um, image that's on the canvas, which I think is freaking fabulous. Let me see. In my area, there's one. See, just one right out of the blue. None other next to it, but there was one right out of the blue. You will miss one. 
I have several times. Thinking, oh yeah, I got them all, I'm on a roll. No, no. <laughs> One will definitely sneak up and bite you in the butt. And I honestly don't see any more. I need clovers, and I don't see any. Okay. I'm probably missing it, but you get the point. Three, eight, five, seven. That's right. Now I'm not going to sit here and have you watch, you know, every little bit, but I will show you the finished product when I'm done. And it'll probably take me, you know, because there's some people who will sit here for hours and hours and hours just from start to finish, and then they have back problems, their neck hurts, their tense there you know if you sit in one spot for hours and hours and hours you're at risk for blood clots too so um there was one youtuber who suggested when you're doing this get up walk around every you know maybe hour or so just get up walk around go get you something to drink stretch your neck out you know that way it continues to stay enjoyable as opposed to like, gosh, my neck hurts. I don't want to do that again. And then you end up with a half finished craft project in the back of your closet. It's not a race, you know, from start to finish. You work it on your, your timetable. Me, I'm going to go out of town next, this, this weekend. I'll be out of town for about a month. And it'll sit here. I'm not stressing. I'm not stressing because it's, you know, yeah, I would like to see the finished product. I mean, come on, isn't that pretty? <laughs> but, uh, it's not worth my health. And then I can take this and lay it right back on top of it to cover any open adhesive. If I wanted to stop right now, that's how easy that is. Put that right there. And what I've done when I was done with whole sections like this, as you go over it and you make sure all of your little resins are pressed down. And then I'll put a big book on it and just leave it set overnight or until I get back to it or whatever. But they call it diamond painting because... See, look at that shimmer on it. It shimmers like diamonds. I could never figure it out until I actually finally ordered one and thought, diamond, they can't be painting with diamonds. That's ridiculous, you know? But yeah, you see how that shimmers like that? It's almost like, um, oh, what's that really, really extra fine glitter? That micro fine glitter. Yeah, it's like glitter dust. That's what it reminds me of. So, but yeah. That's my intro to um, diamond painting. I'm going to let you go for now. I'm going to get up and walk around. It may not seem like it's been very long, but eh, I've been here a little bit longer than before I started the video. So, give me a thumbs up if you like me. Uh, or if you, even if you don't like me, but you like the video, you know, hey, give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment below. Subscribe if you like my videos. Click that little bell button if you want to be informed I'm depositing another video. Uploading, controlling, whatever the words are. No, if I upload another video and you're interested, then uh, if you click that little bell icon, it'll show up in your notifications up in the corner that corner, either corner, depends on which way you're facing the camera, right? Remember always to have fun, always find the humor in life, because if you don't, life sucks, and I hope everybody has a blessed day, and I'll see you next time.